Now, the, obviously, the other thing that's very, very um, prevalent, of course, is presbyopia. It's, it's having more of an issue of reading, and that happens mostly in sort of middle age, mm -hmm. often from 40s onwards, right? And the presbyopia is more about having the fear of the present, mm. more of the fear of the present, plus often a little pa impatience or frustration, especially if they've been used to reading quickly without any thought, and suddenly, oh, they can't see it so well. So it often starts with not seeing so well in dim light. And in the olden days, it was about not being able to see the A to Z. Right? Mm -hmm. But now it's the dim light, it tends to be the dim light. So, you know, in order to help, um, I look at how much computer use they're, lo you're, they're doing, because this is such a huge thing you know, and giving them tips on that. And then, obviously, it's um, to do the, the palming, which is very, very important, which I will be telling you a little bit later on. Um, but having more patience and compassion with themselves. Think, oh, I can't see this. I have to put on the glasses. Bother, where are the glasses? You know, mm. it's, it's, it's being cross with the eyes. This doesn't help. The eyes have no prejudices. They want to see everything. What is the mind doing to cause this? And then I'm looking at their breathing and blinking patterns because often, you know, when they're trying to read, the net becomes stiff. You know, then they're holding their breath. Then they're staring, not blinking, not staring. And of course, <gasps> you know, the poor eyes, the poor body is just absolutely rigid. And of course you can't see. Mm. And the other thing is, is when you're wearing glasses for reading, you have to see from a particular point in the lens of the glass in order to see. So it makes a very rigid neck. So instead of their bringing down their nose and eyes to where they're reading, they're looking up and just bringing down the eyes. So there's huge stiffness here in the neck. And, of course, the neck needs to be free, it needs to be fluid in order for the passageway of blood, oxygen and nutrients to get to the eyes, the body and back again. Mm. So the presbyopia is a big thing. And again, in order to work with that, um, first of all, you know, you just put on the glasses when you need them. You may be able to see far better in good light. So it's very important that you have good light at home. So I often promote the serious reader light, which is very, very good which just pinpoints where you're reading, which is very, very good. We also have things called pinholes. And pinholes, I'll just show you here, even though viewers may not be able to see them, the pinholes here have little uh, pins, little, little holes inside the, the plastic, dark plastic frame. And that allows parallel rays of light to enter the eye just in the right place for you to see. And often you will see two or three lines better. So it's like a transition between glasses and just seeing more naturally. But they only work in good light. But that can also help. And even some of the opticians are now promoting pinholes. Mm. That's a good one. And then the other thing is, I said squint is all about emotional issues. Now, if you're looking, for instance, at floaters... Mm -hmm. A lot of people have floaters because they're yep. using the computer so much. And then when they look out in bright light or a clear sky or blank background, they see all these little wiggly worms in front of their eyes, right? And then what people tend to do is follow these worms. Now, if you follow the worms, they procreate, and you get <laughs> great nephews and great nieces of worms. This is just no good. So you try to... to um, N not to see them, to avoid them, not to see them. But with the floaters, again, it needs, it's a strain of the mind, and again, the, the relaxation will help enormously. But the floaters um, are often about what is bugging you in your life. Mm. What is bugging you, right? And again, floaters can go. And I had one client who um, did a daily record of when, how many floaters she seemed to have during the day. She was an opera singer. And eventually, with all the relaxation, eventually it was none. With the relax But you have to be dedicated for this, Lee. Mm. I mean, we can only do lessons, but the lessons aren't enough. Um, it's very important that they are practicing in between the lessons. You know, and of course they can always email or um, you know, query something in between. But in the end, we can't do it as teachers. 
Yeah, it's we exactly. Can only educate. It's exactly the same for my clients. You know, if they get an exercise program, I can't do it for them. Right. I, I can't eat the right diet for them. I can't make them go to bed at the right time. No, no. So there's only so much we can do. But if people are really, really wanting to help themselves, they will do it. Mm. They will do it. So that's presbyopia. Then you think of the pathological eye diseases. So, for instance, you've got glaucoma. Mm -hmm. Glaucoma, I'm coming from a whole family of glaucoma. And it's always about, uh, it's, you know, I remember when I went to, um, a, t to a, a lesson to, for the, to the chairman of the Bates Association, and this is right at the beginning of my training, he said, there is nothing you think, there is nothing you're seeing, there is nothing you are being or doing without strain. But it didn't affect me too much because I always had high energy. It was just showing up mostly again in the eyes and occasionally in the back. And so glaucoma is from um, straining at everything. It also comes or can come because of anger and resentment from some past um, thing that hasn't been resolved. Mm. And like with my auntie, she had glaucoma and she had a trebulectomy for it. And, you know, after she died, uh, you know, I, I did this work really just before she died. I realized that she had a lifelong resentment against her siblings. They all went out in life, had careers, married and everything. And there was poor auntie just looking after mum and dad. So she felt a great resentment and bitterness. Right. So it comes often from that. Not always, mm. but that's one of the reasons. Now, for instance, with macular degeneration. Now, there's a lot of macular degeneration that comes again when we're older. Can right? you, and just for the, about, sorry, can, for the audience, can you just explain what macular degeneration yes, is? Yes, macular degeneration is when the macula, that is the, the seeing part of the eye, is becoming more and more blurry. And so it's becoming increasingly difficult to see and also can be... Um, you know, difficult to move around, right? And you can have wet and dry macular degeneration, but it comes from when we're, we're older, when, when the eyeball becomes more rigid, you know, more, more rigid. It, you know, it's just like, you know, our bones age. We, we look after them as best we can, but they do age. Mm. It's just like the eyeball does age. Anyway, with that, it's often that um, they've lost the purpose in life. Often, you know, it may be a spouse has died, and they're on their own now after a lifelong partnership. You know, it could be from a sudden loss. Not always, but that is a general way of doing that. But again, we can, can help. And the, the other one is um, macular degeneration, glaucoma, cataract. Cataract mm -hmm. is now very widespread. Mm -hmm. in, in my auntie's day, they always said it was really, you know, having too much sunlight in the eyes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now... My hunch is that it's more and more to do with the fact that everybody's on the computer. Then they're using the glasses. Then the lens is just aware of just this tiny little 30 to 60 centimeter space. It's not looking around anymore. If the eyeball and the lens are not moving around, it becomes static. Circulation stagnates. Cataract. And the cataract is when you've got an opacity of the lens, which is the seeing part of the, you, you, you know, the light goes through the lens. The lens is made of lots of little structures, little layers of paper. And it's when um, one or two of those layers are not clear, like a window pane, so you can see through it. They've dislodged, so it makes it blurry, and, and the lens becomes opaque, so you can't see properly. Right? And that's about seeing the point in life. Are you seeing the point in hmm. life? Right? And for instance, my, my neighbor, who um, was having a cataract that was just developing, and you know, it wasn't ready for, for an operation or anything, and she'd done some Bates work and was helping it, and then she was at the traffic lights driving her car, and another car, I think it was a lorry, that went into the back of her, gave her such a shock that the, the, the opacity of the lens became so thick that she had to have a, a, an operation within six weeks. So again, a strain of the mind, a shock. Mm. Right, a real shock. Yeah. Okay. And let me think, was there anything else? Astigmatism is the mm. other one. Lots of people get astigmatism. This is when the cornea, which is the front part of the eye, is not what is called a parabolic curve. It's not like a, um, 
um, a, a, like a, a rugby ball. It's got little indentations, little valleys and little hills, which are caused all by, by strain. And the astigmatism, again, we can help, and that comes and goes within a moment or two. It's not stable like short sight or, or long sight or presbyopia, per se. And again, it's about thinking and doing too many things at once. It can also be due to a sense of confusion, even betrayal. But these are just broad strains. You know, it won't uh, mean uh, to everybody, it won't uh, apply to absolutely everybody. But 